Hi everyone and welcome to the first lesson for this Krulis template. Uh, in this lesson we're going to look at two very simple concepts. The first one is data validation. That's going to allow us to create drop-down menus. And the other one is named ranges. So as you can see, I'll start with a blank spreadsheet. We're going to go ahead and name that. And uh, after that we'll get in the meat of it. I need a table and I need probably my position first, then name of my freelancer, their phone number, and their email. And we're gonna keep it at that, uh, keep it very simple for today. Uh, so I have a bunch of columns on my right side. I'm gonna get rid of that just to make it a little cleaner. So I select the column by clicking on the header, and then I'm gonna hold, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hold Command, Shift, and the right arrow on my directional arrows on my keyboard. And when I do that, that's gonna select all the columns to the right side until it runs into text. So here, because there's nothing, it just selects all of it. So again, one more time, we're gonna select the header, command, shift, and write. There we go. So then I can right click the header and say, I want to delete those columns. I can do the same thing with rows below. So this way I don't have too many in front of me. Let's say, let's start here. Command, Shift, and Down. From Hop, it selects everything below. If you're on a PC, I assume it's going to be Control, Shift, and Down. All right, well, next, let's go ahead and format this table a little bit. So we're going to select the whole thing, and then we're going to go to the paint bucket, and all the way at the bottom, you'll see alternating colors. So that's going to make our table look a little bit better right away. And if we look on the right side, we've got a few settings. Uh, we can choose whether we want a header or not. And then a uh, footer, same thing. And we can choose between several uh, color designs. And finally, we can customize everything if we want. So I'm going to choose gray. I'm not going to put a header because I like to have um, more control over that stuff. I'm clicking down. Then I'm going to put in a color manually. Again, this is really not necessary, but you know you can do it however you want. Um, I'm going to bold my header, and then we're going to start adjusting the width of the columns. So let's say maybe 200 and let's say 200 for positions. That should be big enough. Uh, we're going to do 150 for the names, 125 for the phone number. And then we're going to do um, 250 for the email. Boom. So we get something going. And now let's let's build our dropdown. So in order to build a dropdown, we need to use data validation. And data validation essentially, is, it's very simple. It's just, it dictates what can be entered in a cell. And it dictates that based on a list of words or a list of words that's in a range. And that's the second one we're going to do today. So. Uh, right now, my tab is just name list uh, sheet one. So I'm going to rename that to crew list. And then I'm going to add another one and we're going to call this chart of accounts. Because that's where my positions are going to come from. So uh, I'm going to paste from my side, but essentially, uh, you want to write whatever you want in this. Just make your own little uh, list of positions, and you can see I didn't really fill the whole thing. So if you want to start with just you know production and 80s or something like that, it's totally fine. Uh, I'm gonna resize this just to make it look a little more pretty on my end, and then just like we did before, I'm gonna delete everything to the right. So select the header, command shift right, and right click, delete. And I I want a bunch of rows in there because I want to be able to add to this as uh, time goes on. Uh, next, we are going to name this, and that's the other part of our lesson today, it's name ranges. So I'm going to select the entire column, and then I'm going to go to data, and I'm going to go find named ranges. So again, there's a menu that opens on the right side, and if we look at it, I can name my range, that makes sense, right? And then I can see what my range is, and right now it's column, the whole column A. Um, the logic of this is that we're going to be using this range in our data validation, and we're actually not going to need the header at the top, that's this position. So I'm going to adjust my range to say start at A2. So now it's going to start here and go all the way to the bottom of the column. And finally, I'm going to name this and name this positions. 
and click done and hub. Uh, if I click on this, it will show me that it's the whole column except for A1. All right, so I can go back to my crew list and then I'm going to select everything in column A except for the header. I'm going to go to data, data validation, and let's look at what we have here in this menu. So first I have a cell range, so A2 through, I guess, A11. We're gonna we're gonna remove the eleven here. We're gonna say, hey, go all the way to the bottom of the column, in case we add stuff later on. And then we have a few options: list from a range, list of items, number of text, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's our criteria. So if I had selected a list of items, I could say, you know, item one, and then put a comma, item two, and and go forth, and that'd be my list of terms. But because I have a range, I can cl click on list from a range. And then either I need to select the data by clicking this and then clicking in my spreadsheet, or I can just type the name of my range. And that's way easier, and it's also more intuitive to know what where this data is coming from. Uh, so I want my data to show in drop-down cell, so we're going to keep that selected. And then here's what happens when someone tries to type something that's not in the list. Uh, show warning or reject the inputs. Because we may have some positions that are, you know, um, new and we haven't added them to the list, we're, we're going to just show a warning. But if you want to prevent someone from typing something entirely, just click the reject input. And then show validation help text. That's only if you're doing the reject input, then uh, you'd be able to specify the error message that shows when someone is trying to uh, enter something that's not in the list. But we don't need that right now. So let's go ahead and save that, and you'll see the second I do that, it shows it will show a drop-down menu. And boom, and we can see that now, if we click on the drop-down, we have all of our positions, same way that they appear in the chart of accounts, and I can start typing, and it will give me the options that match. So for instance, director, photography, and then just to finish this, I'm going to type in a name, and then phone number, and it's not formatted for now, so we're going to take care of that in just a second. Um, and finally, I'm just going to tap, uh, type a random email. Uh, so let's take care of this little formatting issue right here while, uh, while we have the time. And essentially, I'm just going to select the whole column, except for the header. And I'm going to go to Format, Number, and then More Format, and I'm going to say Custom Number Format. So in this menu, I can do a lot of things. Today, we're not going to explore that so much, but you can see here uh, actually examples of what we're about to do. We're just going to create a format for the, the phone number. Once you create one, it will appear in the list, but on your end, this is probably not going to be available. So uh, my preferred format for phone number is just a pen parentheses, the first three numbers. For that, we're going to use zeros, close it, a space, another three zeros, a dash, and my last four zeros. And once I click Apply, my phone number is going to be formatted so that even if I tap, type something totally random, it's going to format it the way I want it. So finally, I take this column, and I'm going to align left. So for that, I can, of course, go up there. But we also want to be able to use our shortcuts, because that saves us time. So I'm going to hold Control, Shift, and left, and that's going to align left. And I can do the same thing with R, Control Shift R to align right, or with E to center it. All right, well, that's it for today. Uh, I invite you to come and start lesson two with me, where we're going to learn more about conditional formatting.